Okay, uh, I'm going to be coming from the book of Exodus chapter 20. And I'm going to highlight verse 4. And verse 4 talk about engraving images. And I'm going to go back and down to the 8th verse. When again it begins to talk about the Sabbath. But I encourage you to go to Exodus chapter 20 and read the whole chapter when it talks about the Ten Commandments. Um, so, engraving images. When you look at the definition of graven, it means sculpture. It's something that was... Uh, you know, you know how the artists back in the day used to make statues and things of sort, and they bow down and worship them. But here in the house of prayer, we have uh, also engraven images: the lion, the pictures that's in your house, and the angels, and also the cross is an engraven image. And we most definitely bow down and worship the cross, which is a graven image. We also wear them on our and around our necks, and uh, it's just like wearing a coffin around your neck. It's something that they crucify Christ. We know that, and we don't need to see it in order to remember. Just like when our parents die, we don't need to see the coffin to remember that they died. Or that's how they, you know, went out in a coffin and was buried. But I'm just going to show you this. You see these angels? They are engraving images. Now, I have nothing against the, the bishops of the house of prayer because they only do what God allow them to do. It's written. If they didn't do what they're doing, then God would be a liar. And our Father is no liar. Because His word shall come to pass. So let's get right into it. We're going to Exodus chapter 4. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any, in, any graven images, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the waters underneath. So we're not even supposed to have statues of fishes. No sort of fishes. Statues of animals, which is the lions. And it says no, no engraved images of heaven above. And here it is. We got angels. So we also got statues of Daddy Grace, Daddy McCullough, Daddy Madison. And we we have to wake up. Isaiah 29, it says that God pulled out a spirit of deep sleep, whereas though our leaders couldn't understand the scriptures. And some still don't. But is it their fault? I forbid not. It's not their fault. It's just the word of God. It had to happen because our people are rebellious people. We refuse to listen and do what Yah say do. And we always choose the easy way out. The doctrines of men. Isaiah 29 also say that we we are living by the doctrines of man. So once again, I'm going to show you. Those angels are engraven images of the heavens above. The lions are engraven images of the earth. And we have to, we have to, Stop. Okay, now we're going to go to verse 8 when it talks about the Sabbath day. 
any Roman calendar would tell you that Sunday is the first day of the week. So if Sunday is the first day of the week, the seventh day is Saturday, which is the Sabbath day. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. We are supposed to keep the Sabbath day. Even in Isaiah 56 and 7, it say that we shall keep the Sabbath day and not pollute it. I believe it's Isaiah 56. If you read 5 through about verse 8, you'll run across it. We are supposed to keep God's Sabbath day and not pollute it. And the Sabbath day starts Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. To the best of our knowledge as of right now. Uh, verse 8 to say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy works. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservants, nor the cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. So even if you got servants, slaves, back in the day when they used to have slaves, when a man owed them debts, they became their slave and had to work for them to pay off their debt if they couldn't pay it with money. So, even with even with that, uh, Christ came on the scene. Now, we'll take it too far. King David was, let's go to King David. King David, and Christ used King David as an example. He said, did not King David go into the high priest's uh, chambers and eat the unleavened bread when he was hungry on the Sabbath? And then, because the Pharisees was mad with Christ because they saw Christ and the disciples out there in the fields grabbing food because they were hungry. See, but there's an order of it. You, you do things accordingly to how God sets the scriptures up. He never said, and then Christ tell you in the commandments, keep the Sabbath day. Christ kept the Sabbath day, but if they were dying hungry on the Sabbath day, and also David, he kept the Sabbath day, but he was dying of hunger, so he went and ate on the Sabbath day. It's a difference. There's a difference. You have to be in real need and orders for God to accept when you do something against the law. So now we're going to go to uh, Matthew's chapter 12 when it talks about the Sabbath day, what I was just talking about, about Christ breaking the Sabbath day. Hold on, let me get my music together so I can get in my room. Uh, uh, Instead of scrolling on the internet forever to find a recipe, um, I'm going to try a little something. Bear with me. You should make what I'm... All right. So now this says... 12 1 at that time Jesus went on a Sabbath day through the corn and his disciples were and hungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat but when the Pharisees saw it they said unto him behold thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day but he said unto them this Christ talking have ye not read that David what David did when he was hungered and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. 
Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath day the priests and the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Now he's going to give us an example. We're going to jump down to verse 11. It said, And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, Will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? So that's Christ right there telling you that he's Lord of the Sabbath day. And if there's an emergency of something, then of course you're guiltless when you break of the Sabbath day. Now, we know that we can't just be out here just breaking the Sabbath day. Like, if you got a job, and your job requires you to work on Saturday, which 90% of them do because the government is against God. So they set up all their laws, whereas the, like they set them up as if a little truth and there's a little it's a little light in them but at the end of the day they're not God's laws they totally hates God they against them and they cause us to stumble like the one woman marriage things none of our ancestors had really one wife I mean if a man wants one wife because one really it's hard to deal with one so if you got two three wives or whatever it takes a, a a special man to be able to deal with these women especially in this time of day because they are nowhere near obedient as they was in the ancient of days and in the old times but uh i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up because i don't want to be too long and too winded but I just pray that we in the house of prayer, we get it together, we get it right, and we be that church without spot or wrinkle.